Welcome to the channel, it's Almighty Den and I'm back again and today we're here to talk about EA College Football 25 coming out in July and this past week they had content creators go there and they were able to play the game. The embargo was lifted today so they were able to talk about it. So today I've spent time watching live streams, YouTube videos, and reading articles to come up with my own personal information dump of 25 points in which I feel you will all find useful. Now, y'all be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I do know there are going to be more gameplay details dropping tomorrow, and I will be here to talk about those and share those with y'all as well. As I've already pre-ordered my game, so, you know, I'm going to be on this game. I'm going to be dropping content for y'all on college football, and we're going to run it up. You know what I'm saying? Let's get it. So, let's start with point number one. EA wants to release the details of game modes themselves coming soon. So, they asked content creators not to release too much details about the game modes specifically. But that should be coming in the upcoming weeks. But as far as gameplay details, those should be coming tomorrow. We should see more gameplay details tomorrow. This will be good to see because while I think the trailer was fun and, and, and cool to watch, um, it didn't really show too much actual gameplay. It looks very, very cinematic. So, tomorrow should be a big day for us, especially for those of us who want some additional gameplay details in comparison to what I'm about to show y'all in this video moving forward. Moving on to point number three, and this is from a developer. College football should feel about 30% faster than Madden due to skill discrepancies, making the game feel more fast-paced. Now, that makes sense when you look at it from a perspective of, okay, if you have a team like Alabama, Georgia, Florida playing smaller schools and they have bigger, stronger, faster athletes, when you go against athletes who are not as athletic, um, it's going to make the game play feel a little bit faster. Like, okay, you're going to really feel the impact of a player who is maybe a generational speed talent or a Lamar Jackson per se when you're playing on a college level. This leads us to point number four. Defense may feel harder to play due to high power offenses. Now, if you watch college football on Saturdays, you know that a lot of these college teams will put up 70 points, 80 points, 60 points, 50 points against smaller schools or defenses that aren't just that good or may not have the talent or may not be as well coached. So that's good to see and as well. We can definitely expect that from a faster paced game. And point number five, there are some new catch animations. More specifically, in college, you need one foot in to complete a catch. In the NFL, you need two, so there will be some new catch animations there, but there are some of the same catch and tackling animations that we've seen in Madden as well, but that's to be expected. I mean, you can't just invent a whole new way of tackling and catching the football, so that, that should be expected. Moving on to point number six, no X-Factor abilities, no guaranteed animations, and there will be special mental and physical abilities. Now, I do not know what those special mental and physical abilities entail just yet, but I do feel safe with saying that, of course, if you have a top-tier elite player at a certain school, that they will have some extra benefits with using those players if they're extremely gifted. Now, the no X-Factor abilities, if you play Madden, you know a lot of those players have certain abilities that... And which would trigger animations almost like a game breaker that will trigger outcomes. Maybe like an automatic fumble every time you get a hit stick. Maybe a special juke move is going to break the, the defender every time. Maybe a route runner that will just break the cornerback. So no guarantees is very, very good to have as well. But with the special mental and physical abilities, I'm interested to see how that will play a factor. Number seven, the weather matters. The weather matters and that rain can cause players to slip, leading to more points. And this is all going back to that point earlier with high power offenses and, you know, a faster paced game. So with this being said, it looks like the offenses will be putting up a lot of points, especially if the rain is causing players to lose some slippage and uh, get beat on certain cuts and routes and whatnot. And number eight, new kicking controls. Uh, and I've heard that this is uh, more difficult than it did was in previous years. And especially if you're with a smaller school or you have a kicker that's not as talented or doesn't have the ratings. I've heard kicking can be a very uh, uh, challenging aspect of the game, especially when you factor in the composure component to playing in college football, which we'll get to that later. Now, point number nine is a point in which I feel like truly only time will tell once this game drops and once players get their hands on it and they begin to use to see how good it really is. Is it going to be balanced? Is it going to be exploited? Or is it going to be a play that you can use here and there that works really, really well? But so far, I've heard that it feels really good and the passing component seems to work really well also. Point number 10, left stick feels responsive versus ball carrier moves. I've heard that the ball carrier moves, aka the jukes, the spins, the stiff arms weren't that impressive versus just using the left stick and trying to like swerve your way through the defense. But keep in mind, very, very early 
um, in the gameplay stages. We haven't seen much yet about how it's intended to work. But that these two last two points are kind of opinion based. But this is what I've heard from people who's played the game. Number 11, linebackers don't pick it off every single time and their hands are not as good as the wide receivers. So that's very good. You could expect the linebackers to drop some picks and not expect them to be out there like they're Justin Jefferson jumping 10 feet into the air just stealing the pass as if they have the same vertical and athleticism as LeBron James. So that's good to see as well. Point number 12, NIL is incorporated in Dynasty and Road to Glory. And players can get in trouble um, with academic ineligibility if they are focusing too much on NIL. Point number 13, kind of more of opinion-based, but Dynasty appears to be fun. And it's believed to be harder to win championships due to some of the difficulties in some of the recruiting processes and all of the things that you have to factor in, which we'll have more details in this list about that coming going forward. And number 14, conferences can be edited. You can bring back the Big East. And you can also edit the schedule as well. So that gives us a bit of customization in Dynasty moving forward. Now, point number 15, I've heard from multiple sources that Dynasty mode recruiting will be intensive. You know, you might have to factor in NIL money. You might have to factor in academics. Does a player want to go to this school and get a good education? Do you, you might have to factor in, oh, does this player want to come here and play this position, skills? Are this team going to win a championship? A lot of things you have to factor into recruiting this year, and I'm heard it's going to be very, very intensive. Now, point number 16, there are new coach tracks. There's, you could be a tactician, a recruiter, or a motivator slash developer. I'm looking forward to getting more details on those but those are some of the abilities you have as a coach as well point number 17 a lot of research has been done to impact where players are being recruited you know i know in real life you have a lot of good skilled players in florida georgia and in kind of the midwest you might have a lot of linemen that come out of the midwest for example now these are just example schools but i just wanted to make the point out there that a lot of research has been done to impact where players are being recruited and that will play a factor in the intensiveness and the location when it comes to recruiting players to go to certain schools. Now, point number 18, more realistic drop back coverages instead of your linebackers and your DBs just sprinting back to the zone without kind of just having a natural progression of reading the defense. Now, that could be a very good addition to the game as well as long as they're getting to that zone at a reasonable time and as long as you have some ability to help them get to where they need to go faster. Um, no high school and road to glory. And you start off as a recruit for number 19. Point number 20, there's a campus IQ feature. I'm still waiting to get some more details about that. Now, they kind of grazed over this feature a little bit when I was reading about it and listening to it. But that is a new campus IQ feature. And number 21, which I think is a very good point, is there are new in-game passing mechanics that are expected to be very different than what is currently in Madden. As we're coming up on the last points I'd like to share with you all, y'all be sure to like the video and subscribe if you're new because tomorrow I will be dropping more gameplay information as well. But going into point 22, the game speed adds difficulty to being able to use the hit stick and tackling as well. So some of these players are a lot more faster and shifty. Uh, so you may have to be better with your timing when it comes to tackling. Uh, broken tackles felt frequently in the early gameplay versions that they were content creators were playing. Um, so hopefully that that's not too out of control. But to be realistic, if you have a Derrick Henry in college and you're going against a smaller school, he should definitely break a lot of tackles. Uh, number 24, there is a new wear and tear system, and you have to manage players' fatigue, usage, and their hits do matter. So if you get them the ball to players repeatedly, it is possible that they may get hurt or their attributes go down. Now, point 25 is crowds feel alive. There's real audio and fight songs in the game. Composure plays a major factor which can cause away teams to feel rattled, which can fluctuate ratings. Now, this bonus point down here is the fact that fatigue actually matters. This is something that was emphasized. So players are should reflect getting tired in college games vastly different than in NFL games. You know what I'm saying? So if you out there, you're getting cooked, you're getting burnt, you know, you're a DB out there, a wide receiver, you out there every play of the game, you will see a noticeable difference in conditioning and fatigue. Uh, which goes back to the wear and tear system as well that they added to the game So I look forward to playing that and experiencing that as well, but that is the list for today I hope you all enjoyed it, man So y'all be sure to check in uh, tomorrow as well as we'll have an update. But anyways until next time uh, Denski out